So for our very first dungeon, let's go over and actually create a brand new map. Now for this map, let's set it so the tile set is going to be dungeon, of course, and let's set it so the width and height is really big, so like maybe 60 by 60. It's going to be pretty massive, actually. And we'll name it just dungeon, like that. Very simple, very easy. We'll hit OK, and we're now we're good to go. Let's actually zoom out a lot so we see the entire map, so right there. And now let's get straight into this. So this tutorial is going to be revealing how to make a dungeon, particularly with Generate Dungeon. So what I mean by this is that if you go to your dungeon map right here, right click, you'll have this feature called Generate Dungeon, which as you can probably guess, is going to randomly generate a dungeon for you. So let's select say like one of these walls, one of these floors, and then hit OK. And boom, there we have it, a dungeon. It's that simple. Now if we actually go back to our Generate Dungeon feature again, we'll notice that there are quite a bit of features. We can choose a type between rooms and maze, options of add margins or wide passages, and so let's do a couple of these. So like obviously adding margins will make it so the room is the whole room is like more shrunk together. So if we hit OK, we'll see that it's like more put together. If we choose to do wide passages, that's gonna make so the passages are a lot bigger than normal. And now if we choose to do a maze, we're gonna get something like this, which is gonna be more oriented towards like a maze type structure instead of that like room by room based structure. And of course, if we go in here and do something like add margins and wide passages, it's of course gonna add more margin to the room and make the passages a lot bigger. It's pretty self-explanatory on how these generate dungeons are gonna work. So like I said, pretty much that's all you do. Generate a dungeon, choose a wall, choose a floor, choose a type, choose your options, and you're pretty much good to go for your own custom dungeon, just like that. But now, let's talk about how to actually properly use these. To start off, see this map right here? Chances are you don't really want to use this type of crazy maze. I mean, it's available, but oh my gosh, look at it, it's so crazy! It may look simple, or maybe it looks not as bad from this perspective, but when you're playing as a player, and you've got that very tiny perspective of the entire maze, and you're so confused, this is not going to be fun, it's going to be complete madness, and you're going to hate it. So number one, if you're doing a maze, make sure your dungeon is a lot smaller than the one where you're doing right now. For mainly bigger dungeons, you want this big area, so you can use something like this. That makes a lot more sense for a dungeon, because it's pretty linear, and pretty straightforward. Now, another thing to talk about is encounter rates, which are extremely important. If you're using random encounters within a dungeon, be sure that this thing right here, your encounter steps, is set to something very, very, very high, like 90. In fact, I would say, do not put this at anything but 90. And the reason for this is because when you're in a dungeon, you don't know where you're going. You, the developer, know where the correct path is, but the player is going to be exploring this thing for quite a bit of time. And if you have your encounter steps set to something like even 60, that's going to be a lot of encounters that you really don't want to deal with. So setting it to 90, it's just going to let it so that the player is going to have an easy, accessible way to go around the dungeon while not encountering enemies at extremely high rates. It makes things a lot funner for the player, just trust me. If you have a dungeon, make the encounter steps 90 and don't make it anything lower. And finally, when it comes to dungeons, don't leave them like this. This is a boring dungeon that has absolutely no substance to it. You need to add some rocks, some things, maybe some like dis details, like go right here, go into draw mode, just draw some of this, maybe not that big, but just draw it around, spray it around here and there, add some poison spots if you want to, go through your other tile sets, add some of these like structures, just don't make it so extremely boring, don't just generate it and call it done, cause oh wow, well that sucks so much, just yeah, throw in some, let's zoom in a bit. So let's go in here, let's go up here, let's draw some columns, let's put some right here, there, there, look good, add some broken ones while we're at it, go around, just, just fill it out nice and neat, that's all you really gotta do. Don't make it one big thing, and besides all that, you're pretty much good to go to make it pretty simple, easy, but at the same time, not completely boring or annoying dungeon. Now to finish this up, let me just quickly connect this to our actual map, so we'll create a spawn point like right here. In my opinion, the best way to do it is to just make a thing that goes completely out of the map like that, so it's on the very edge, and we'll set it so there's a transportation from here to the overworld, so we'll go to Quick Event, Transfer. We'll transfer this to the map 01, and from the mountains, direction is going to be down, hit OK. Then in the map 01, we'll go to the dungeons, we'll make it so that this is going to transfer us to the actual map right there. So, dungeon, go right here, go down, and then we're also going to make sure the trigger is going to be Action button, so the player touches and then interacts with the mountains to go into there. So we'll just copy that and paste it right there, and we're good to go. So now, as you can see, if we go talk to our mountains, it'll bring us to our brand new dungeon that's self-made, it's generated, it's not, it's great, I guess, and yeah, it's really all there you need. 
You can make this make some pretty cool ruins, develop it your own way, just keep generating it till it looks something cool, then add all these functions to make it look a lot better, and always keep in mind that your players have a very small perspective of the entire thing, so going through it is going to be very difficult, so make sure it's not extremely annoying and horrible and make people want to cry and die. Until next time, RPG Maker Tutorial 